one times 70 does not work. Or negative one times 70. Have you done any factoring in a while? Yeah. A okay, little, so yeah. you're trying you're trying to find two numbers that multiply to negative 70, but then add to three. Let me think. Oh, negative seven times ten equals three equals negative seventy. So we have we have x plus ten, x minus seven equals zero. That's what I have. Yeah. All right, so now you set each of these equal to zero. X plus 10 equal to zero, X minus seven equal to zero. All right, so then minus 10, X equals minus 10 plus seven, X equals plus seven. Yeah, now one of these makes sense in the context of the problem, which, which one is it? The negative 10? Well, we're looking at less, Actually, right? no, yeah, the seven. So X has to be seven. X, yeah. All right, which means that the other dimension is 10. The inside? Well, I mean, the, the fact the one is one's the length and one's the width. It doesn't really matter which one is which. You just have to label the two dimensions. You, you want to provide an answer that's like length equals width equals. Got it. Okay, the length is... 10 and the width is seven and you might might want to include units centimeters yeah i see all right so here is uh here is one for you to try happy to help but uh this is the same problem with just different numbers okay I recommend drawing a rectangle, just like we did in the last problem. Wait, so I have X parentheses X plus four equals 96. Good start. Now what should I do? I, I, and I distributed the X as well. Okay, tell me what you have next then. X squared plus four X equals okay. 96. <clears throat> so just like, let's go look and see what we did in the last problem. You bring that number over. That number over by subtracting. Oh, right. Okay. Get everything on get everything on one side of the equation. So you got x squared plus four x minus ninety equals zero. And now you have to find two numbers that multiply a negative ninety but add to positive. Wait, you mean negative ninety-six? Sorry, negative ninety-six, thank you. Okay. Uh Negative eight times 12 equals negative 96. Negative eight plus 12 equals positive four. So I believe that would work. Yeah, eight and uh, 12. So you got X plus 12, X minus eight. Good. What is the correct value for X? Like solve this, hold on, give me a second. Yes.
minus eight x. You're setting each of those equal to zero. Oh, 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 oh. And, they're, and they're and they're linear. So x equals minus twelve. X equals positive eight. That's right. Now, which of those is actually okay in the physical problem we're doing? Like we're talking about a we're talking about a rectangle. Yeah, I guess if it's times three, then so the negative twelve or the eight. So th think, think about this. I mean, have you ever told someone I walk negative 12 centimeters? No. So you got to sometimes put it in the context of a real, real situation. Yeah. Right. right. So in this case, it's, it's eight centimeters is X. Okay. The, uh, the length and width are the final kind of pieces that you have to just determine here. Is X the length or the width? Is X plus four the length or the width? <coughs> and it's, it comes from the wording in the prop. The length of the rectangle is four centimeters. So four more than the width. That's right. So, so the length so the, is the bottom one. That's right. So the uh, we found X to be eight. So the width is eight, the length is 12. Okay, here is another one. Let's, let's see if you can do one more and we'll switch up the style of question. All right, so this time the width of a rectangle is two meters less than the length. The width is two meters less. Like. So less less means what math operation is less? Less than or taking away? Subtraction. Subtraction. Okay. Subtraction. Yeah. More was plus. So subtraction? Yes. So your your rectangle this time. is the width, and sometimes it's okay to say, okay, if X is the width, it's two meters less than the length. So actually let's make, let's make the length X. The length is X. The width over here is two, two meters less than the length, X minus two. Okay. That, and that's where I, you know, well, hope, hopefully you're comfortable with setting up those types of equations. If not, you know, more we do, the better, better it'll be. So it'd be X and then parentheses X minus two. Yep. yep. And then they tell you the area is 48. All right, so we got X squared minus two X minus 48. Okay, so uh, go ahead and factor that for us, please. Negative eight times six equals minus 48. Negative okay. eight times six equals plus two, or plus, negative two. Well, so what goes, give me, what, what goes inside the two factors here? Negative what eight. The, six. So x minus eight, x plus six. Is that what yeah. I heard? Yeah. Okay. All right. So now set each of these equal to zero. And you have to solve each of them. X equals eight, x equals negative six. Okay. And which one makes the most sense to use in the context of a problem like this? And length, speed, positive or negative? Positive, the eight. So it has to be the eight, yeah. Yeah. 
So, so in this problem, that's why sometimes you actually use the word to describe the length is eight. What is the width? Six. Six. Very good. So that's that's kind of your first style of question, some sort of an area problem. Uh, do those look familiar to you? Something you've seen before? Yeah. Okay. The next style of pro uh, problem is kind of this uh, something is launched into the air type of problem. Okay. So we'll look at uh, we'll look at that here. If a toy rocket is launched vertically up from the ground level with an initial velocity of 128 feet per second, then its height h after t seconds is given by the equation h of t equals minus 16 t squared plus 128 t. This is your function right here. Okay. So there's a couple of things that they can ask you about when you're dealing with one of these rocket problems. The first one is what's called the vertex. Right. Okay. Then the vertex has two points. It's got an X and a Y. You can be asked, like, when? When does it occur? And then, and then what, what is it or how high is it? Mm -hmm. Think of that as like place one, place two, place two is when it hits the ground. Right. When it finally lands. Yeah. And, th and those are, they tend to only ask those two things. So you only, I only seem to ever have those two situations. Got it. Right. This one is asking. How long will it take for the rocket to hit its maximum height? What it is asking for is the X value of the vertex. So right in the middle, a second? Well, this, this, it's asking you when, when this occurs, when this vertex occurs. Okay, the, uh, and there's, there's some formulas to do this. The formulas are minus B over 2A. Does that, that at all look familiar to you? Yeah. Okay, so minus 16 T squared plus 128t. Do you remember the values of A and B when it's written in this form? B is 128, A is negative 16. Good. So will you calculate minus B over 2A for us, please? Yeah. You're allowed to use a calculator if, if you All did. Right. One sec. Four. Oh yes, it is uh, four seconds. Got it. So that's that's the how long will it take to reach the maximum height? The the next question that it almost always asks is the well, what is the maximum height? What is the maximum height? So you get that by putting this value of four into the original function. You have to put four in for T and in for T. Got it. This becomes minus 16 parentheses four squared plus 128 times times four. Again, you're welcome to use a calculator. Go ahead and see what you come up with, please, on that.
Hmm. I'm getting 220, but I don't feel like that's right. Yeah, that that is. What kind of what are you using for a calculator? If you don't mind me asking. No, I wasn't. I was just doing the math. I was. Okay, I mean, you, you kind of need some assistance. I mean, this four squared, fine, that's 16, but then you have to multiply 16 times 16, then 128 times four. Uh, let me just drop in the chat. I, I use this all the time. Definitely uh, I recommend add, it. I didn't add them, but yeah. Okay, keep on going about that. Well, I was just saying, this is a good calculator. You, use. you enter it the way you, you write it um, so that it, it looks the way it's supposed to. I have a question for adding it up though. Okay. So nothing, at, it's just all coming together, right? I mean, you can get this number first and then get this number, but yeah, you're gonna eventually add them. Okay, so yeah, that's what I have. Okay, uh, did you uh, add those together? Yeah, well, yeah. I got my two totals now. Let me just add them. Two fifty six. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Like I mentioned up here in the picture, A and B are, are all about the first place at the vertex. The third thing they'll ask you about, or the second thing they'll ask you about, depending on how you look at it, is, is when it hits the ground. And that's, that is, in fact, what this question does ask for next. It says, hey, when does it, when does it hit the ground? So to do this, we have to set the original function equal to zero. So I'm going to grab that original function. Here's the original function. We have to set this thing equal to zero. Minus 16 t squared plus 128 t equal to zero. Okay. And, and the question is, well, how do you solve this? How do you, you know, how do you how do you work this? Now, you had problems like this earlier in the course, um, probably a little bit before we started working together. This is a GCF problem. There's the greatest common factor that goes into both of these. Is it eight? It's negative. Well, negative. It's more than eight. Negative 16. 15? And then the negative. You, you really want to factor out that negative and then P because they both have a T in it. So you divide both of these by negative 16 T. Uh, negative 16 T like that. So it's T plus, wait. Negative eight? E minus eight, yeah. So you have to set each, each of these equal to zero. Minus 16 T equal to zero. T e minus eight equal to zero. Okay, the one further to the right will be a little easier, but yeah, t okay. plus eight, right? Yeah. Add eight to both sides. Yeah. The one left maybe looks difficult, but you're <laughs> dividing by negative 16. Really dividing, yeah. And that becomes zero. And you might be like, well, what do you mean by zero? Well, it starts, this one actually starts at the origin, fires up, and comes crashing down eight seconds later. Mm -hmm. So how long did it take for the rock to hit the ground? P equals eight seconds, like that. Second, got it. 
Okay, we're gonna try one more like this. Okay. All right, uh, Jason jumped off a cliff into the ocean in Acapulco while vacationing with some friends. His height as a function of time could be modeled by the function h of t equals minus 16t squared plus 16t plus 480, where t is the time in seconds and h is the height in feet. How long did it take for Jason to reach his maximum height? So Jason is jumping off a cliff, coming down, crashing into the water, we hope. Nice and safe. So we're interested in first when. Are we still factoring? No, nope. We're a uh, new problem, totally new problem here. We're, we're interested when he reaches his maximum height. That always occurs at the vertex. Always occurs at the vertex. So, okay. how did we find the vertex in the previous problem? Do you remember? Or do you want me to scroll up and show you? I mean, it was right in the middle. Uh, it is between the two zeros, but formula formula wise how did we do that i don't can you scroll off? sure so to do that sorry getting where i can get that oh, why is it scrolling there it is okay the vertex is at minus b over 2a minus b over 2a got it yeah you definitely want to have that you know written down in your notes yeah, maybe yeah. um all right now the um, that's great and all in this case it's actually t equals minus b over 2a what's the value of a b and c in this problem a is negative 16 uh b is positive 16 and c is 40. fantastic <coughs> all right so could you find the value of P for us? When does this Jason hit, hit his maximum height when he jumps off the cliff? Yeah. I have negative 16 over negative 32, which just comes down to positive one half. I feel like that's so it, Well, remember, you, you're you you don't have superpowers. You're not gonna really. This is not to scale. I mean, you don't you don't have superpowers when you jump. You might jump up a little, but then you start coming down pretty quickly. So right. you are correct. It is 0 0.5. Oh, okay. Okay. And. So you've got to somehow associate the word maximum with vertex. The maximum vertex? The maximum, well, the vertex could be, the vertex is two things. It's either the max or the min. Okay. I don't, yeah, right. Okay. All right. So now, now that you have, <coughs> now that you have, well, when it happened, Jason didn't, uh, and 0 0.5 seconds later, he hit, he reaches his maximum. Now we actually want the maximum. To get that maximum, you have to put that put that 0 0.5 in for t. So this is the original the okay. original formula. There, um, you're going to put 0 0.5 in for for t. So it look, looks something like it's minus 16 times 0 0.5 squared plus 16 times 0 0.5 plus 480. Minus 16. squared plus
I have 484. Yes, that is correct. So notice he can't really jump that high. Well, yeah. I don't know. Four feet higher. I guess it's a pretty good standing jump. Um, you're also kind of jumping out, so you can use that. Okay, that's really good. Um, do you remember what the last thing these problems asked for? We've we've taken care of everything up there. What's going on down here? Uh, when does it land? Yeah, when does it land? Okay. So depending on the problem, you know, you may or may not be able to do that. Let me check real quick and see if this one has a nice solution or not before I, I, I uh, see if we want to do it. This one does, so we will do that. Okay, we want to know we want to know when he when he hits the water. Okay. So you're you're looking at minus sixteen t squared, plus sixteen t, plus four eighty, and we're setting that equal to zero. The very first type of factor you always try a GCF, just like in the last problem. Does this have a GCF? Sixteen. Negative sixteen. Negative sixteen. So divide each of those by negative sixteen, and let me know what you come up with, please. Uh, t plus, yeah, t squared plus t. Minus, you're dividing minus. each of these by minus, minus 16. Okay. Minus 30. Yes. Okay, so let's focus on the part inside parentheses here. Okay. You need to find two numbers that multiply the negative 30, but then add to negative one. Negative six plus five. So we have T minus six. P plus five. What do we do from here? Yeah. What's the, we did this in a several problems already. So um, happy to scroll up, but. Distribute back out or like. That goes backwards. We don't want to go backwards. Let's go back and look. Program? Yep. Yep. So what do we do here? Oh, subtract or get zero. Set them both equal to zero. Got it. So can you give me those values for T? X equals six, X equals negative five. Okay. And we're in a we're in a time, you know, time problem. So it does Negative five makes sense. Yeah. In time? I mean, Wait, no, maybe I mean, about, we can't go back. No. Yeah. I mean, maybe we talk like sort of like, oh, you know, it was so great, you know, five seconds ago, but <clears throat> right. you really can't. And so time is, you know, in reality, you know, we think about time as being moving, but we're, we're always in the present. It doesn't matter, you know, when in our life, it's always the present. Okay, so six seconds later, person Jason comes crashing down. They hit the water. Hopefully, they have a nice form so they don't get injured. Mm -hmm. and, uh, all right, any questions on that before we look at some other problems? No. Yeah. All right, so I found some uh, other things that are, I mean, I think, I mean, they're not really all that more interesting, but they're, they're uh, minimum problems. So I think, I think what maybe I heard is that there's the perception that vertex only means max. Well, the vertex can mean can mean a min. Uh, yeah, good okay. So a manufacturer of tennis balls has a daily cost 
of this function here, where C is 200 minus 10X plus 0.01X squared, where C is the total cost in dollars, and X is the number of tennis balls produced. What number of tennis balls will produce the minimum? Okay, so they're, they're asking about, and this time the graph looks something like this. They're asking about the minimum right there. Yeah. But there's two things that the minimum has. It's got an X and a Y value. I want you to first find the X value of the minimum, minus B over 2A. Okay. Gotcha. I have, hold on, wait, yeah. 10 divided by 400, this is like, yeah, 10 divided by 400. So you're making the classic mistake here. You've got to, and I didn't, I didn't say this. I just wanted to see what would happen here. You need to rewrite this in descending order. 0 0.01x squared minus 10x plus 200. Oh. Uh... Okay. A is always the number in front of X squared, B is always the number in front of X, and so on. I see. You have a, an answer for me for X? Yeah, I'm a, almost one second. Okay, yeah, take your time. Take your time, just uh, checking in. Wait, how would I multiply two times 0 0.1 X squared? Remember, A and B are just numbers, A is 0 0.01, not 0 0.01x squared. It's just 0 0.01. Uh, so to answer your question, you're just multiplying 2 times 0 0.01, which is 0 0.02. All right, so 10 divided by 0 0.02? Yes. Got it. Let me know if you need any help with the calculations on this one. Fifty. Close. I think you're just just. Uh, Signer, it ends up being, or not signer, I just did move into digits. It ends up being 500. Oh, 500. So, yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Please, please use a calculator. Over, right. Th these, are, these are really meant to be done more or less with some sort of a computational device. It doesn't have to be a full on graphing calculator, but just something to help with the numbers. Yeah. Okay. So that's the first part. That's the what number of tennis balls will produce the minimum. Okay. 500 tennis balls. Okay. 500. But, 
what we really care about, I mean, if you and I owned a tennis ball manufacturing company, we'd want to know what the cost is of 500 yeah. per day. Well, let's find that 200 minus 10 times 500 plus 0 0.01 times 500 squared. So will you uh, see so if you can calculate that for us, please? Actually, this is not a good problem. Um, Don't do it. I can. Well, I already started. Well, the the cost is negative, which is bad. Um, it won't. It doesn't make sense. Oh, okay. But um, so to do it correctly, we should put like a two thousand there. That still, that still won't work. That still don't work. Won't work. Let's do plus two three thousand. Okay. Uh, somebody didn't pack this when they made it. Okay, so on the right side, I have negative 2,000 plus 2,500. Okay, there you go. That's correct. So add those together and you get $500. Yeah. Very good. All right. I got one more question for us to look at. Um, you asked for it, so I delivered lots of these application yeah, problems. Uh, some of them are interesting, some of them are unreasonable, but yeah, that's, that's all, we, all we've got to work with tonight. Company's weekly revenue in dollars is given by R of X equals 2000 X minus two X squared, where X is the number of items produced during a week. What amount of items will produce the maximum revenue? So we're back to maximum revenue again, okay, right there. That's the X equals minus B over 2A. Would you very carefully tell me the values of A, B, and C in this equation up here? Wait, what'd you say about something after following the X? Well, you really, you, you really want this in descending order. Like this is not in the right order up here. The, yeah. So, Minus 2x squared needs to come first. Right. Then 2,000x. Then 1. Well, nothing, 0. Yeah. So what are the values of A, A and B? Negative 2 and 2,000. Yes. C is 0. Could you calculate this minus B over 2A for us, please? Yeah. 
negative 500. Uh, yes. It's, well, no, no, it should be positive. So negative 2,000 over 2 times negative 2. It's five, positive 500. Got it. Okay. I, I, yeah, I see it, but yeah, I see it. Now to find the maximum revenue, we got to put 5,000 in here, 2,000, I'm sorry, 500 in. 2,000 times 500 minus two times 500 squared. I'm gonna go ahead and calculate that just because we're running out of time here. So this first part is a million. And then the next part here, is 500,000, subtract, and you get 500,000 for the maximum revenue. All right, I hope that satisfied your curiosity for